what is the drive for adventure? Now, that's a serious question. Like I, I don't understand a lot of things in life. Uh, I'm not an expert in any capacity at any level on any topic. But complacency, complacency is, has always been scary to me. Mediocrity was always scary to me. Um, being stuck has always been scary to me. Having said that, I would say a good portion of my life has been mediocre. I would have to say uh, a good chunk of my life I've played it safe and been complacent in where I was and I would say that I've definitely felt stuck for a good majority of that time. Now having said that I think I've had a very good life a very very good life. I've been very fortunate I'm, I'm not rich we don't have everything you know it's been a long time since so we didn't have nothing including a home it, it it's not that everything went exactly the way I wanted it to. It's just I look at what I do have and I'm very appreciative of what I do have. And I think I I struggle with this a lot. Sometimes I feel like my desire for things to be different is representative of me saying I'm not appreciative of what I have and I don't appreciate my life and the people in it. Um, But I really don't think that's it. I really think what it is is that I just want to do things to, to, for me to define what it means to live life has always been hard. I truly believe that, that being as happy as you can be, being as thankful as you can be, being as humble as you can be, being as appreciative as you can be are, are, are some of the major steps, and I try to do those things. I also believe for me that, that having my family and them being safe and being with them every day, that's an important part of living life. And I talked about this not too long back on another podcast. I'm having a hard time, but I'm trying to make myself understand that those days when you just can't do anything, those days when it's all day in bed and you just didn't accomplish anything, that's okay. That's okay. That's that's still a good day. If 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 most of that day is positive, if if ten percent of that day is positive, it's it's still a good day. It's okay that every day's not a grand adventure. A lot of it's timing in life, a lot of it's willpower in life, a lot of it's drive. You know, I, I wrote my first book because that something I'd always wanted to do and I finally got the courage. And, and how much courage does it really take? I finally just went, hey, look at this, and showed it to other people. It's not like it was overwhelmingly rejoiced as this grand work. I got great feedback from people and I like that. Um, it's not a best seller. It's not even a kind of good seller. It's not even a decent seller. And that's okay. The new book may follow that same path. I don't know. Or it may be a New York Times bestseller. I, I don't know. But I don't care either. It was the adventure. It was the, the process. It was the endeavor that was rewarding. I've got a friend working on a book right now. And I really believe as as apprehensive as she is that when it's done that that reward will make up for all of the days of worry because it did for me you know last year I ran my first two 5k's something I always wanted to do now if I had done that at 18 I'd have been pretty good at that I was in good shape I was a good runner I enjoyed running when I did that at I'm not sure how old I am 38 I was 30 I was, yeah, I just turned 38 when we actually ran that. Or no, just turned 37 when we actually ran that. I'll turn 38 this year. I just turned 37. I was fat. And I was out of shape when I started. I had what I call jujitsu lungs. And I can't explain it. Jujitsu is a different type of cardio for whatever reason. Jujitsu cardio is not like running. Like you can roll forever in a, in, in, on a jujitsu mat and not get winded, but. You can run 10 foot and get tired. But I started training, and and I moderately trained. Now, the second 5K was a trail run. And I'd never done anything like that. And I realized I was walking a lot of hills at work. And even though I I got in shape for the first 5K, I was a little out of shape for the second one. 
uh, but still performed much better than I thought I would perform, and, and that felt good. Those are two very little things. I didn't run the Boston Marathon. I, I didn't run this big, well-renowned 5K. And even though I got medals in both, one was for first place in my division. Trust me, there were people much older than me and very, very much younger than me. Some young, no, there was a young girl who beat me as far as overall. And in the the trail run, I, I think I actually got second place in my age group, but they gave me third place in someone else's age group. It didn't matter. Like, it was my feeling of accomplishment, not not what I got from them, you know, that, that made me feel excited and feel good, you know. That, that was what made me, um, I don't know, feel a little bit better about myself. And, you know, I, I've been out of jiu-jitsu. I've had injuries, financial issues, travel. I've got to a point where I'm extremely out of shape again. And I've started that process of getting back into shape. And I can remember when I first got out of shape and got back in the first, because I've been yo-yoing for a long time. And it was fairly easy to get back into shape. But every time since then, the time being out of shape has extended and to where I've spent more time out of shape than in shape. And I got for a long time where my mentality was, I'm just going to get back out of shape. Like, yeah, I want to get down to, to, to 185. That's my goal weight. I want to get down to 185, which is still obese, I think, for, or maybe not obese, but definitely overweight, according to that stupid scale for my size. But I also think, man, I get there, and then, you know, I can hold that for a couple of months, maybe compete and jujitsu at that for a couple of blah, blah, blah. But I never think long term. I always think, well, it'll be short. Or if I do get there, man, I'll just get back out of shape. And that used to be a deterrent. That used to actually keep me from trying to get into shape. But not anymore. Now, I look at it differently. If I'm in shape for two weeks of every year, that's better than not being in shape at all. Enough times on this yo-yo, maybe it'll be like when I quit smoking. Or maybe it'll be like when I quit all these other things that were bad for me. Maybe, maybe I'll stay on the upper side. And maybe that'll be, maybe I'll do good this time. Maybe I'll stick with it this time. You know, I ran today uh, in the rain, and it was miserable. And I, you know, I'd been well. I ran probably a mile and a half. I walked the other mile and almost half, coming at like two point eight, and it was very hard. My legs were getting tight. I've not been able to run a full three miles since I've been back doing this for almost a month. But to compensate for that, I've been walking sometimes five miles a trip. You know, instead of just walk running two or three miles. Actually, I've been doing that substantially it usually ranges from 3.9 to 5 miles and so I'm putting that effort in instead of quitting now I was off two days and I got extremely lazy and so I had to come back to do it in the rain today when I didn't want to and this should have been my day off because I went the first seven days back with no days off you know when I started getting back in shape and I just wonder other people like Getting in shape to be healthy and live long enough to see every minute of my kid's life that I can should be motivation enough, and it makes me want to do it. It makes me want to do it long term, and that makes a great long term goal, but that doesn't always get me started in the short term. And I wonder for other people, what gets you started in that short term? Like on anything, if you want to write a book, if you want to make a movie, like I really want to make a documentary, but I really know nothing about filmmaking. Like I don't. I don't have enough interest in the camera work and, and all that took like I want to you know I, I want to find someone to collaborate with that they're not interested in the writing or the directing or the research and they're only interested in the cinematography you know but what do you do to motivate yourself because for me like I look at adventures if I could get an adventure out of this say I can run like this and this year I could do maybe two more 5Ks if the world ever opens back up. If I could do that, then there's the chance this year that I could compete in and finish a 10K. And if I could do a 10K, then maybe next year I could do a half marathon. And if I could do a half marathon, then possibly 
I can get into one of these tough mother things. See, that's that's how I kind of try to motivate myself because running a 5K was a dream, and I did it. I get, I know it's not a big deal. Like I, I say that, and I know people are like, okay, it, it's a three mile. Like it's not, you know, not that it's not an accomplishment to do it, but it's not like a big deal. You know, you didn't climb Everest, but for me, it's something I always wanted to do, and I was able to do it. And I didn't do it perfectly or beautifully, but that felt good. And that's what kept me going on and got me to the next 5K. I've always really wanted to do a Tough Mudder. And I don't think going directly into that is the best thing. Because one of my real goals is to do one of these endurance races, these 50-mile races. I know how far I am from that right now. But I'm trying to baby step this, and for some reason, I seem to function better with the baby step method. And does that work for other people? You know, or can you just get motivated and go? You know, I just need to walk every day because that's what I need to do. Because I I can't do that. But if I sit down and look and go, if I start walking five miles a day, then I can get to seven miles a day, and then I can get to ten miles a day. If I kept working and got up to 15 or 20 miles a day, then I could weekend hike and knock out big chunks of the Appalachian Trail because I don't have the financial ability or time from work, and I wouldn't want to miss six months for my family to go hike it as a through hike. Like it's, As much as I want to do the Appalachian Trail, it's not worth six months away from my family to go do it. Now, if my, if my son was older and... Everybody was able to come see me, you know, maybe two times a month or something. Yeah, that'd be that'd be great. Like it, that would make it better. But if I could just do it in sections, that would pacify me. I mean, that would that would make me genuinely happy. But I know to go attempt something like that and not be able to get fifteen and twenty mile days is is a waste. And I know if I pushed myself, I could do a fifteen or twenty mile day. But it would be hard and it would be painful. And I would like for a 10-mile day to be commonplace before I had to do that. Do I look at that backwards? Do I look at those things? Do I look at how I set goals differently? Like, am I looking at it wrong? You know? Because some things, I don't do that way. For example, that you take jiu-jitsu. When I I took um, Chalando years ago, and, and I took it because I loved it, no doubt about that. I adored it and, and still truly appreciate the beauty of it. But a large factor for me, a big driving factor for me was always, what's my rank? What belt do I have? What, you know? And I still feel a desire to go back and complete that and get to the point that I wanted to get to. And... and it's more for a rank, and I know that's not a good reason to do it. Jiu-Jitsu has been a different beast for me. The promotion process is much slower. That's understood from the get-go. There's milestone markers that you get stripes on your belt, but the belt promotion process is much slower. But it has been in no way a part of my thought process like when I come in it was hey in two years you know training hard you may be able to be a blue belt okay cool one promotion in two years all right so I don't have to think about the promotion I just want to I fell in love with doing it but I really really enjoyed the people more than anything I had great people around me and I got to a point to where a couple things happened one I don't think about the promotion at all I think about the activity And I don't think about, well, this is self-defense for the future. Think about, I enjoy doing this. And a lot of things have kept me out of doing it. I've not done it as consistently as I wanted to. But I have done it fairly consistent over the course of this July would have been three years. You know, but with this coming in and an injury and some financial stuff and a lot of working out of town, there was a lot of time in that three years I was out. Now, going into that third year, am I a blue belt? No, actually, in my opinion, I'm not even close. And that's okay. That's one of the few areas in life. Like, 
it's kind of like raising a kid. Like, yeah, I'm raising my kids. Okay. To some degree, you're done with certain things by 18. To another degree, maybe 21. To another degree, maybe 30. To some degree, maybe 13. But I don't look at raising my kids in that vein. I don't look at it as, okay, let's get to this point to where maybe I have to do less of this, or let's get to this point where I have to do less of this. I don't I don't look at it that way. And I don't look at jujitsu that way either. I look at it in the moment. As I do it in the moment. And I, I guess Do you have things that you look at both ways? Or are you a look at everything in the moment person? Or are you a look at um, the, you know, look at progression all the time? Send me an email. Send send me a message. Make a comment. How How do you gauge progression? And what what method do you think you use more of? Like what what method do you think is is more beneficial to you like I hear people say constantly and it's something I'm getting ready to try sit down and make yourself write a thousand words a day no matter what I've never done that I've always went okay let this stuff come as it comes and it comes sporadically, and it comes just here and there, and it'll come in big clusters, and it'll be a long time, and then there'll be little spurts. There's nothing measurable about my output of writing. Um, on the other hand, I'm very attached to the things I do write, and I scrap a lot less stuff than I used to scrap, because I've never did the, you got to sit down and write a thousand words today thing, but I have done the, okay, you got to write at least three times a week. And I found that I was writing a lot of stuff I just didn't enjoy writing and didn't mean anything to me. And I understand everyone's different and different things work for everyone. But also, sometimes I can be lazy. And sometimes I can procrastinate. And sometimes I can dismiss something before really giving it a fair shot. I think everybody does that. So are you are you a goal-driven person? Or are you a, I just want to do it and let's see how it happens and how long it works. Because... I do certain things each way, but I find myself to be more focused when it's goal-oriented. But I also find myself getting out of heart pretty quick when I don't hit those goals. I don't know if I've ever used this quote before, but Aristotle said, The ideal man bears the accidents of life with dignity and great, making the best and grace, making the best of circumstances. I would like to say that I do that. You know, I would obviously like to say that I truly feel that's um, that that's how I approach things. But even in you know that's that's in trying to better myself all the way around. It, it, Am, am I chasing something that, in a lot of ways, is a waste of time? Is it a fruitless endeavor? Is it just something you do purely out of um, vanity to try to be healthier or try to be a good at something? Or, you know, uh, is it just truly selfish to say, I want to be in better shape so that... I can kayak this, take this kayaking trip, or I can take this hike, or I can do this great adventure. Is that just selfish? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't know how I, how I truly, how I truly feel about that. I feel like it's valuable to try to better yourself, whatever it is. To, I, try to read something every day or to try to learn something, to try to change your opinion on something, to try to find facts that are irrefutable but go against everything you believe about something. I believe it's valuable to do that from time to time. I believe it's valuable to try to be physically better. I believe it's valuable to try to be mentally better. I believe it's valuable to try to be a better person. I believe it's valuable to try to be more compassionate every day. I do. But is even though 
that seems to be in to make you a better person for the betterment of other people for for the sake of other people is that still a selfish endeavor i don't know I, I've, I've thought about those things all day send me an email let me know what you think you know how do you motivate yourself what are things that you think are important what do you set goals for really appreciate everybody using the new email that's um, and and that's why I did the show in the format I did it in today because I did one the other day and like I get tons of responses and that's that makes it fun you know it makes it more interesting. Um, the new book is, I mean, it's basically complete. I, 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 it it's just it's a matter of date and time. I'm thinking about going ahead and getting with a local bookstore, um, getting them their copies, letting them run it for a couple of weeks and see what they can do with it, and then just go ahead and do the release. I look for if there are people, um, a couple of the places I distributed my books have the ability where you can follow authors, and if the people enjoyed my books at bottom, they may have followed me, and if they did, it will give them the release of my new book, and if that happens, then I look for my book to do decent overseas. Um, not decent on the level that a book company would think's decent, trust me. Decent on the level of, I feel like, you know, more than 100 people read it. Um, and, and I look for that to happen overseas. But I'm, I'm hoping that this time, maybe with a different approach, I have more of a local impact. Because it, it, it feels good. It's nice to have, um, I have it, the word success is a weird word, to have it recognized by by your peers by people you know and people like that that feels good and and I know a lot of people will check it out and I and I really appreciate that and a lot of people did with the first one but I also didn't make the efforts maybe that I should have made locally with the first ones so I, I I'm gonna do that this time for sure um I, I want I, I cut it down it is purely poetry there's supposed to be some short stories now but there's going to be a short story book coming up. Plato said writing is the geometry of the soul. Well, I'm not good at math. So, uh, we stuck with the we stuck with the the poems. I think it was a better format. Uh I'm working on a special little book going to go with it called From These Hills. Um it's going to be kind of just a collection of poetry about eastern Kentucky and mining and things of that nature. That come from not only you know a good chunk of that's from this new book, but some of it come from um, Coal Kingdom. Uh, well, that's where it came from. It's between those two books, it, it'll be a cheaper option and something that you know more specialized in, in regards to a certain style of literature uh, or, or a certain theme of poetry, and then also that may open people up. They may want to read other things that are written that way. So. Um, I don't know that I'm going to release it everywhere. I may just sell it myself. I may just do it with the first month or so of this other book. Uh, I may just do it at live events. I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to do that. Uh, I've spoken with someone at the college that I uh, took my first book to with their summer course. And it looks like if nothing changes, their summer program is going to be intact this year. Uh, and it looks like I'm going to meet the deadline for being published by then. So if I do, hopefully I'll get to get to do that and maybe talk to them about uh, the book and podcasting. I'm supposed to have done some stuff with some high school kids about podcasting. Um, I, I'd already spoken with them about the book, and, and the teacher wanted to have me come back in and all this wonderful stuff with uh, the coronavirus happened, uh, the COVID-19 Whatever happened, happened. Um, but thanks. Thanks for listening. All that good job. The uh, the email is talkjunkie at gmail.com. We're, we're so close. I didn't look before I started this, but we're well under 10 uh, episodes. I would say probably close to 7 episodes until our 100th episode. Uh, we're at 
eight, almost at 800 downloads on Spreaker. We're at 1,000 downloads on um, iTunes already. Um, I believe is what it showed me. So I don't know with Google. I, look, I don't check everything. I don't know how to check everything. I'm completely honest with you. I'm not really good at this. Um, there is a Twitter and the or a, uh, an Instagram. I'm going to use it for the book. Uh, it's author underscore J Perk. I don't know. I'll get that for you next time. But it's definitely there. Please like and share this. Please send emails. Please, please, please share this. Um, thank you. Don't suck. Don't die. Don't be mean to other people. Thank you.